Yeah, that was the second time in about a month that we had to declare an emergency with those same passengers doing that same flight. My name is Steve Bowers. I fly the Lear 60 in the, in the Honda jet here uh, right now. Uh, this next door is going to be a, an interesting flight Brian and I had in the Lear 60 flying from Sault Ste. Marie down to St. George, Utah. Our, uh, that was our original destination, but we'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> so, you know, basically it was, just, it was crap weather going out of Sault Ste. Marie. You know, in the Lear, it's, it's kind of a London. We've always had a lot of issues with it. And stuff. So I mean, the takeoff, everything was uneventful. We turned on all the NTS systems and stuff. We we're climbing out there about like twenty thousand feet, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, we look at the uh, we look at the dash, and we get two red bleed air lights come on simultaneously. And uh, you know, if you ever flown the Lear, you know that once you do that, you have to go one up, one down on your emergency bleeds system. And basically, what that does is that just cuts all hot air out from the tail section. Uh, where all those bleed lines are at, and um, it's it's basically just preventing any kind of catastrophic um, bleeder leak in the back. But when you do that, uh, in order to maintain pressurization in the cabin, um, very hot bleed air is pumped directly from the engines into the cabin and cockpit area. So it is a uh, scorching hot. And uh, so basically, you know, once that happened, we had to go one up, one down. We we're probably about 30 minutes outside Minneapolis when it happened. And we're, we're debating on, you know, Brian was flying. I was sitting right seat running the checklist. And we we're, we we're talking, trying to figure out, well, do we want to go back to Sault Ste. Marie? Or do we want because we're about a halfway point in between there and Minneapolis. Or just go to, Min uh, to Minneapolis. So we decided, hey, might as well just uh, go over to Mini. They got better services over there. And um, I kind of figured I'm going to be airline at home after this because I'm not flying that plane anymore. So we, I'll just catch an airline out of Minneapolis. <laughs> so, so we end up, we got, you know, we had to clear the emergency, came in, and, um, you know, we're getting vetted down into Minneapolis. This whole time we're running checklists, you know, getting everything situated. And the problem with the have, not having the bleed air on is we had no ice protection at this point. And, you know, the weather was just still crap. You know, so I mean, luckily, uh, you know, luckily we didn't pick up that much ice, but it, it was a um, like something we were considering. You know, you know, we'd have to run a, a checklist with ice accumulation on the wings. You know, and in a Lear sixty, when your normal rest speed's a buck forty, and you got to land with ice on the wings, that's a V ref plus thirty. So you know, you'd be coming in at like a, you know buck seventy, buck eighty, and so we didn't we didn't really want to do that. And um, so essentially, we can, we're coming back down into Minneapolis, running the checklist, and then uh, at this point, probably it was about 8,000 feet. It was uh, terrible in the cockpit, you know, and, it, you know, I went to the back, you know, talked to the passengers. There was two guys, you know, we flew them regularly up there all the time. Yeah, but it, it looked like I mean, they were all undressing back there. It was, <laughs> it was hot, you know, I mean, they, they were just very pissed off about it. And uh, so we called in, you know, and sure enough, uh, came on to the approach. Uh, we broke out of the clouds at probably about 3,000 feet. So it was a, pretty, it was a nice, um, you know, I wouldn't say VFR, but it was a really easy approach to, to get back in, you know. And then they had the fire trucks lined up on, like, every taxiway, you know, lining up the whole runway. So, yeah, and then the, to make matters worse, you know, as soon as we landed, we had an issue with the nose wheel steering. You know, and then, then the nose wheel steering uh, stopped working. So at that point, you know, was, you hit the control wheel master button, the red button, to try to give you some deflection. And then we got off the tech, we got off the runway, and then we we're taxiing over to signature. And then on the taxi, we just tried to reset the nose wheel steering, and it worked again after that. So thankfully, uh, that worked. But you know, it was just another little icing on the cake. You know, after a whole. Uh, after a whole time dealing with those bleed issues and then the weather and then getting into Minneapolis and then our nose wheel steering fails on us and yeah so long story short we got into the uh, got into the FBO no problem no um, no assistance required or anything like that but needless to say you know that was I think the I believe that was the second time 
Yeah, that was the second time in about a month that we had to declare an emergency with those same passengers doing that same flight from Sault Ste. Marie to St. George. So needless to say, they, uh, they moved on to a, a different operator at, uh, after that flight. The first time we blew a bearing on the number two engine, Danny and I did departing out of there. You know, we were, same thing, flying and climbing out like 20-something thousand feet, you know, on, on our way uh, west of St. George and then uh, all of a sudden we start getting like the whole plane just starts shaking like this like kind of rumbling the, you know and it, it's kind of you know we look back you know, and ask the pastors like hey do, do y'all hear any of that stuff they're like oh yeah like it, it's really loud back here and like what in the world is going on and so Danny and I decided like you know what let's just go to Minneapolis when we're, we're right here you know man yeah you know, we didn't really even know what it was to be honest with you there's no really checklist to run because uh, there was no there was no lights showing up. There was no nothing. It's like you're just kind of trying to guess what, what do you think it was. And we figured it was a, an engine issue. And then through some trial and error of uh, rotating the throttles, we figured out that it was you know, every time the right throttle would be advanced above a certain end one, that's where we would start getting the rumbling. And so we decided just to kind of pull back on that. You know, we didn't shut it down, but we just decided just pull pull it back um, and just run mainly off the left side and then came back in and uh that was an uneventful landing on that one you know land down in minneapolis and then uh we went to go try to turn the you know we called maintenance they said we'll climb up on the wing see if you can turn the fan up, up front so we try and so i climbed up on the wing and we start we start cranking on that you know as the fan it should be free spinning you know it should have no problem to move it i mean it was just shut yeah that thing was not moving at all and so, yeah, needless to say, apparently what happened is we blew a bearing in there somewhere. And this, that was the rumbling, you know, to be, but it, it, it shows you how uh, reliable them rear engines are, though. I mean, even with the blown bearing on that thing, and it still, it still worked fine, you know, below a, uh, below a certain N1. But, I mean, I'm, obviously, we pretty much, by the time we were coming into land, we had that right engine almost all the way back down to idle. We were just working off of the left side. Hey gang, here from Hangar Talk. Thank you so much for plugging into the channel, liking, subscribing. We appreciate all you continuous subscribers, and we can't wait to see you on the next one.